as Rick said, I, I'm Mike Donovan. I work for uh, Terra Power. Specifically, I work on the Natrium project. It's a sodium fast reactor. Um, Terra Power is actually working on several um, reactors right now, but uh, the sodium fast reactor is the one that's uh, closest to completion. Um, we anticipate building one of these in Wyoming uh, no, no later than 2030. There we go. Okay, so um, so as Rick mentioned, we are uh, you know one of our founders is Bill Gates. Um, however, uh, uh, we we have uh, multiple sources of funding. Um, one of those sources and a very important source of funding is uh, our comes from our participation in the Advanced Reactor Demonstration Program. Uh, this is uh, this is a program being run by the Department of Energy. Um, they've essentially uh, partnered up with several nuclear technologies to, to get several plants built in the short term, intermediate term, and longer term. We're one of the short term uh, participants. Um, and the goal is to sort of, uh, you know, get some momentum uh, behind this nuclear construction, this nuclear renaissance, um, get some plants built, um, take our lumps in the building the first plants, and then uh, uh, ideally, you know, watch the efficiency uh, increase as we get into the N plus one plants. Um, as I mentioned, the, uh, the natrium plant is a sodium fast reactor. Uh, the coolant, wh whereas the coolant for most uh, uh, nuclear plants is uh, water, we will be using uh, liquid sodium metal for the primary coolant. Um, and, and you can see that on the left there. Um, and we will uh, additionally be storing the energy um, in a molten salt loop, which is shown on the right there. Um, this is uh, pretty significantly different from the existing reactor fleet that's out there. And it gives us some very unique advantages. So why use sodium coolant? Obviously, it's a little more difficult than just using water. Um, I don't want to get too deep into it, uh, uh, but I, I will say that we use the sodium coolant because um, in, in an existing water reactor, and I'm a big fan of existing water reactors, by the way. I, I worked in them for 20 years. Um, but when you use water for the coolant, um, you, in, order to, uh, in order to make the process efficient, you have to pressurize the water. Um, and when you pressurize the water, it gets, you know, it, it, there's more expense in, uh, build, you know, capital expense in building your plant. And it's also just a, a physical fact that you are working within tens of degrees um, of, mar of safety margin, um, which has historically not been a problem. But one of the advantages of, uh, of working with a sodium coolant is that we, we will not have to pressurize the sodium in any way. Um, it can essentially be at atmospheric pressure, um, and we'll be operating hundreds of degrees away from the boiling point of sodium, which really makes for a more robust safety case for the newer reactors. Uh, here, here's an overall picture, um, cross-section, obviously, of the, of the reactor. Um, I'm not sure if anyone's uh, familiar at all with uh, with existing water reactors, you'll notice a stark simplicity here. Um, it, it's a very, very simple overall design. Um, passive cooling such that, you know, walk away safe. Um, we don't uh, require any safety related power. Um, so it's, a, it's inherently safe design. Very efficient with the sodium cooling. Um, so I, I will also say in addition to the uh, advanced physical design of the plant. We're also uh, taking advantage of some new, um, uh, some new codes and standards that are allowed by the Nuclear Re um, Regulatory Commission that allow us to um, build the safety case not so much on old style deterministic safety case, but more of a, a risk informed or probabilistic um, safety case, which allows us to really address the true risks and not uh, unnecessarily spend a bunch of time and money uh, on wasted effort on things that are not truly risks. Um, so this is a, another positive step forward for advanced reactors moving forward. I'll also mention uh, sodium fast reactors. Uh, we're moving this technology forward, but we're not the first ones to build one. These have been built in the US before, um, slightly different variants, fast flux test facility, um, uh, EBR one and two. So th this is the, an evolutionary next step of this technology. One of the primary uh, features or strategies that we're undertaking here for natrium 
um, is that we're going to focus the nuclear island, which is more uh, circled in orange there. Um, that's where the nuclear uh, uh, reaction is going to take place. That's the part that's uh, subject to um, regulation by the NRC. Um, we're making a, a, every effort to keep that completely separated out, both physically and functionally, from what we call the energy island. Um, the energy island is the part that's in blue up there. Um, and in this way, we can maximize um, you know, sort of commercial standards um, and, uh, and lesser regulatory restrictions on a large portion of the plant and really have the NRC focus on the portion that is safety significant. Um, existing plants today essentially are all built together without significant separation. Let's see here. Um, and so uh, another thing that uh, utilities are, are looking at nowadays, obviously, uh, um, nuclear plants historically have been capable of load following, but it's not been their strong suit. So we've got, uh, we've got these nuclear plants that provide really good stable base load, but they like to run um, at the same power level all the time. Meanwhile, on the grid, we've got significant penetrations from renewable. We've got uh, uh, solar that's putting out a lot of good, cheap, reliable power uh, during the day, um, but not so much at night. And, and similarly, with, uh, when the wind is blowing, you, know, you, you get a lot of uh, wind turbines spinning, but not all the time. So how do we level all this out? Um, the natrium uh, works on this by integrating uh, not only the nuclear reactor, but also uh, thermal energy storage um, that, uh, that is a technology that's become uh, well developed in the solar industry. And so the, a natrium plant consists not only of the nuclear reactor, but the nuclear reactor dumps its heat into this uh, essentially thermal battery storage or, or, or molten salt store, uh, energy storage. Um, and that, that, uh, the output of that energy storage can fluctuate with grid demands. Um, additionally, it works really well um, you know, hand in glove with uh, renewables because uh, an operator, a, a utility, you know, uh, will have lots of renewables and he needs some, the, the operator needs some way to levelize the load. So the idea here is that uh, through the energy storage system that's part of the natrium, um, they will also be able to integrate solar and other forms of uh, energy and, you know, essentially uh, when the grid needs power, use the you know use the salt to to generate the power when not you just build up the level of the salt until you need the power this is just a quick cross section on the left you can see typically what's uh, the safety related portions of a light water reactor you have lots of safety related pipes if you have uh, you know certain event that takes place the 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 plan to uh, maintain safe shutdown uh, involves a lot of active pumps pumping water into pipes and so forth um, you know, it's worked well. It's a very safe system. Uh, it has a great history. Um, on the right, though, you'll see the step change in simplicity. Um, for the natrium reactor, um, essentially, gravity drops the rods to the bottom. Uh, air circulates to, to uh, discharge the decay heat. You don't need any active cooling whatsoever. Here you'll see the, um, we're taking advantage as well of um, new excavation techniques and building techniques. On the right there, the, the small square is essentially a bored hole down in the ground. Uh, you know, we have our eyes on building multiple of these natrium plants, um, and the idea is that we'd be able to go in there, drill the hole in the ground, drop factory assembled components down in it, um, you know, in the span of two to three years, uh, have a plant up and running. On the left there um, is a, a ESBWR, and, and, and uh, I'm, a, again, a big fan of the, uh, of the boiling water reactors as well, but you can see there the size of the overall size of the excavation, um, the time needed for construction, the, uh, the, uh, the regulatory uh, engagement associated with that instruction. Uh, we're attempting to minimize that, uh, the amount of that. Uh, also, another advantage to the uh, sodium coolant, um, the, the radionuclides generated within a nuclear reactor um, have a great affinity for the sodium coolant, and it has the effect of um, trapping all of that radioactivity in. Um, we'll be able to, uh, you know, a typical um, pressurized water reactor in the US will have an emergency planning zone going out 10 to 20 miles. Um, we anticipate right now the emergency planning zone for the natrium reactor to essentially be at the fence line uh, of the facility. 
So the key differentiators um, with the sodium fast reactor, uh, particularly na with natrium, we, we intend to focus on the nuclear island and keep it separate from the energy island. Um, that minimizes uh, costs and, uh, and oversight um, speeds. It allows for parallel development of those two things uh, to, to, to make construction quicker. Um, we, do, uh, we are working on advanced fuel that makes uh, the, the SFRs even more um, cost effective than they were previously, and the integrated energy storage. Here's a, here's a sort of an instructive cross section. Um, Again, I am a big fan of existing, the existing fleet of reactors. But on the top there, you'll see a cross-section of an AP-1000. You can see the, the complex um, inter, interrelation of all the pumps and, and, uh, and, and cables and pipes, um, similar for all of the uh, existing or previous reactors. And, and then you can see the natrium by comparison there. It's really just a, a single pool of sodium at atmospheric pressure uh, generating heat. That, that, get, that then gets used. There's not, not this complex spider web of uh, safety related uh, pumps and motors that require power, um, uh, you know, it's not passive. We're also doing a lot of work on fuel. Um, I won't get into this too deeply, but I will say that uh, nuclear reactors generally work um, either in the thermal range of the uh, fission neutrons or in the fast range of the fission neutrons. And, and essentially all of the reactors out there now in the US work in the thermal range, which is great for generating power. No, you know, it's, it's worked great. Um, we'll be working in the fast spectrum, which uh, gives us several advantages. One, um, it allows us to generate um, uh, much more heat. You know, we, we, can we, we, we can heat the sodium up to, you know, five, 600 C. Well, which makes the uh, energy cycle much more efficient. Um, it works much better with the um, energy storage. Um, it also allows a much more efficient and complete burn up of the fuel. Um, so it has several advantages. Again, another look at the thermal energy storage. This will serve not only to capture all of the energy coming out of the nuclear reactor, but also um, each utility will size these appropriately to. Uh, to, to levelize load with all of their other energy sources, including uh, solar. And so right now, um, we are working on the natrium demonstration plant. Uh, you know, that's, that's a great effort to build this, you know, sort of first of a kind construction effort. Um, we do anticipate the, uh, to, to learn a lot in that process. Um, and then we have plans for subsequent iterations um, that will be significantly even you know, more efficient to construct and run. And uh, ultimately, you know, going on out there a ways, uh, the sodium fast reactor gives us the opportunity to, uh, in the future, do things like potentially burn up. You know, there, there's a lot of uh, energy still left in what's termed spent fuel right now with the existing reactors. Um, fast reactors, um, theoretically, and in the lab, will allow us to, you know, reuse or, or extract the remainder of that energy out of what's considered used fuel that's being stored out there right now. Um, it's not without its own challenges, but the f operating in the fast spectrum will allow us to, to focus on that and work towards that out in the 2040s. Also, I just want to acknowledge, uh, I'm not sure who all may be out there, but uh, Terra Power is uh, really standing on the shoulders of giants. We're, we're working cooperatively with quite a number of uh, industry partners um, including utilities and manufacturers, uh, um, even one might consider competitors. Um, and so uh, this is just a, a quick snippet of some of the folks that we're working with. And that's, uh, that's my quick introduction. I'm, I'm very glad to get with folks. We'll have a Q&A uh, after the presentations, and also I'm glad to discuss it in more depth with any of you after the meeting today. So thanks again. <laughs>